Hi everybody, in this video we're going to review bacteria rhodopsin. Um, this is a protein that's responsible for active transport in the membrane of some bacterial cells, most notably bacterial cells that grow in the extreme environments of low pH or acidic environment. Low pH is uh, areas that are very, very high in proton concentration. And so what happens to bacteria rhodopsin is that these small, though charged protons, diffuse across the cell membrane and they leak into the cell. Now, the inside of a bacterial cell is always neutral. It's always a pH of 7, and you can probably hear my cat in the background. Um, so in order to continue to exist in this extreme and harsh environment, these bacterial cells need to um, remove those protons or pump those protons out of their interior. And so that's what bacteria rhodopsin does. It's a proton pump. It's responsible for active transport, and it pumps protons from the inside of the cell to the outside where those protons are more concentrated. And it does this again to maintain a neutral pH inside the cell. What makes bacteria rhodopsin unique, and uh, I'll agree somewhat confusing, is that the uh, energy for this pumping comes from light. So let's talk about bacteria rhodopsin a bit. So here is the cell membrane. And as I said, the proton concentration outside the cell is extremely high. That's that acidic environment. And the proton concentration inside the cell is that much lower. Again, we're shooting for a neutral pH. And what winds up happening is that protons follow their concentration gradient passively, and they leak through the cell membrane, lowering the pH inside the cell. So bacteria rhodopsin is a membrane protein. It's a transmembrane protein, which means that the uh, protein goes completely through the membrane. There are domains both inside and outside the cell. And just to review that material a little bit, what that means is that right here and right here, there are actually hydrophobic regions of bacteria rhodopsin that are making favorable, tail, favorable contact with the hydrophobic tails of the cell membrane lipids. But anyway, in the center, of bacteria rhodopsin is a molecule that is purple in its color, giving the whole cell a purple pigment because they make so much of this protein. And that molecule is retinol. And retinol is just a light sensitive molecule. So photons of light are absorbed by retinol. Uh, it causes um, electrons to change their valence shells. It causes all of the bonds, the double bonds in retinol to become trans in their configuration. And essentially, that's just a long-winded way of saying when retinol absorbs sunlight, it changes its shape. It actually elongates. Um, it it uh, lengthens itself. And then when that energy is released, retinol goes back to a shorter form. So if we imagine here that some sunlight is absorbed by retinol, and retinol therefore changes its shape as I just described and expands, we can see that what's going to happen here, or what you will see in a moment, is that because retinol has changed its shape, and has lengthened, the entire protein, bacteria rhodopsin, has changed its shape as well. Now, I consider this to be the spring-loaded form of uh, bacteria rhodopsin. It is now ready to pump. Some of these protons that have leached into the cell will then passively float or diffuse into this portion or domain of bacteria rhodopsin. And when protons do get lodged in that domain, they trigger this trap, they trigger the, the pump. Uh, if you think of retinol as a spring, that spring is triggered, and the pump goes back to its original conformation. What's that original conformation look like? I'll remind you in a second. But that restoration to its original conformation, again, retinol is a little bit more elongated, actually fires or propels that proton out of the pump and back into the external environment of the cell. So we have this kind of switching between two different conformations. We have the conformation that's open inside the cell, and this conformation required sunlight to be absorbed by retinol, and this conformation is the conformation that will accept protons. And then once those protons get into the pump, we trigger the second conformation here, and those protons are pumped out. And that's really all there is to bacteria rhodopsin. What makes it unique, again, is that the energy required to pump protons is coming from light itself. Light energy is being absorbed by retinol. Retinol is changing its shape in response to that absorbed energy. That shape change of retinol changes the shape of the bacteria rhodopsin pump itself, 
spring-loading it and opening it to the inner environment of the cell. Protons then go into that spring-loaded pump, trigger it, and are fired out of the cell by that energy release of retinol going back to its original conformation. And that's the conformation we see here, where the energy has been released. And then bacteria redopsin through retinol can be charged once again by sunlight and repeat that process again and again and again. Again, this is an, an example of active transport because we're moving protons against their concentration gradient, removing them from a region where their concentration is low and forcing them to go into a region where their concentration is high. That is active transport. That requires energy, and here that energy is coming directly from the sun uh, due to the ability of retinol to absorb that sunlight. And as I said in the main lecture, Bacterial cells make so much bacterial redopsin that the cells themselves take on a purple pigment, a purple color, because they're studded with these protons in their membrane to keep all of those um, protons pumped out and to keep an internal pH of 7.